Hi, welcome back to the channel. Recently, I read a comment uh, from a subscriber who asked how we can bring data from a rich text column from SharePoint into Power BI. Rich text columns can be a little bit complicated, um, depending on the features that you activate. So if we take a look, we have here on the right hand side, one column called comments. And if I go to edit options, we can see here that we have um, the type being multiple uh, lines of text. And if you select here the more options, we can see that we have the use enhanced rich text uh, feature activated and also the feature called append changes to existing text, which means you cannot delete the text that you already entered, but every time you edit it, it appends the text um, that you just created to the one you had entered before, which means you end up with a table and in that table, you have then the values, um, the, the text values that you wrote in HTML format. So the tricky part would be to bring this information into Power BI. But first, let's take a look how this uh, looks like in SharePoint so that you can get a feeling of what information we are expecting to see in our SharePoint list. For that, I'm going to close that and I'm going to minimize a little bit my camera, otherwise you won't be able to see anything. Okay, so now that I'm uh, on a decent size, let's click on this uh, comment here and let's see what are these view entries. So we end up in this, yeah, I don't know how to call it, like maybe a form no? from SharePoint where we can edit the information. And as you can see here, I've already en entered a couple of um, comments. And what happens is that when you click edit, you cannot see the previous comments here. What you can do is um, you can write a new comment, save it, and then it will appear in, um, in this table here or in this uh, comment section. So the goal for today is to bring this data into Power BI so that we can visualize this information and um, yeah, learn together how we can do that. Hope you like the video. If you do so, please make sure that you give it a thumbs up and that you subscribe to the channel. Have fun with it. So as you can see, we are here back in Power Query and you, uh, if you saw the last video, we already have done this um, with our version history and here is the solution for getting that extendable rich text field. So we're going to see how it looks like and then go through it together. Okay, so I am going to show you here this uh, query, it's called rich text extraction. And as you can see here, we have our items which have um, a text in that column. And you can see here these three um, texts that I've inserted. And is this a test, second test, third test? And this is one from another item. So as you can see here, we have now four entries. What happens if I go to home and say, uh, refresh this preview? it will add here a fourth element in our uh, item ID number one. So give it a second to load. And as you can see, we have here now, this is the fourth test. So our item ID number one has four entries into that uh, extendable comments column, uh, reach text column. But how did we do that? So first I'm going to say, add a new query and I'm going to say more and I'm going to copy the URL root from my SharePoint site. Um, in the meanwhile, I'm going to select the online services and then online SharePoint online list. And then I'm going to paste it in here. I'm going to say, okay. And after it has connected, I need to select here my SharePoint list, which is called schools and click okay. And it will add it into this folder here. I can drag and drop it out of that folder so that we can keep it uh, separated. Come on. Yes, there it is. So I'm going to close that. So we are here in a new folder called other queries and we have our schools um, items. Um, Power BI has already done some steps here for me. So I'm going to delete those because I don't want all those uh, bunch of columns. I only need a couple of them. So what I'm going to remove as well is a GUID here or this ID of the uh, SharePoint lists and libraries that are in my site. So I'm going to delete that and I'm going to filter here um, only everything else out and I'm going to keep my schools list. Okay, so now what we can do is we can expand this items uh, column 
and we need here to select a couple of, um, of columns that we have in our SharePoint list so that we can use them in our um, query. So what I need is ID. I need also the parent list and I need the comments column. And as you can see here, the problem is why you cannot uh, just connect to that field is because if you see the school, uh, the item ID number one, which is the one we, we have those four, um, four comments, um, it always shows you the latest comments. comments. So as you can see here at the bottom, no, it says this is a fourth test. This is the last column of that, uh, the, the last uh, comment on that column. And the problem with it is that you cannot uh, extract the information from here. It always shows you the last one. So this column, I just imported it to show you uh, how it looks like, but we don't need it actually. And to keep my applied steps here a bit clean, let's remove that and let's remove it from here, from the expanded items uh, action. So I'm going to remove it from here and I'm going to keep it like that. So we have here the parent list column and the ID, which is the ID of that item and the schools. So this one is my SharePoint uh, list name. This is my uh, item ID. And from here, I want to have the uh, parent web URL column because here is my SharePoint site name saved. Before I extract this SharePoint site name, because I don't need this part, I'm going to transform this column to a text column. And I'm going to right click and say split column by delimiter. And it has already recognized the delimiter that I'm going to use, but I'm going to say only the rightmost delimiter. So I only want these two columns to be splitted or these two paths. Otherwise, if I say uh, on each occurrence of the delimiter, we have two occurrences here. So it will have a blank column and then two other ones. So I don't need that. That's why I'm choosing rightmost delimiter. Click OK. And then we can go on and delete this column. And this one will be our SharePoint site name. Okay, so what we need to do next is we are going to invoke that uh, version history um, a query, the custom query that we use in our previous uh, video. So I'm going to click on that and copy the code, which is in this uh, advanced editor. I'm going to go to the other queries folder, say right click, new query, blank query. And it put it into the wrong folder. So let me grab it and put it in there. So, okay. So this one is our um, schools list with comments. And this one is extract comments uh, query. Let's call that that. Okay, so as you can see here, it's um, doing nothing yet because it's blank. So I'm going to paste in the advanced editor the code I just copied. And again, it's the same one that we used in the previous video for um, extracting the version history. But instead of going now and um, expanding the changes in, the, in each item in the version history, so for each of the columns, we're only going to do it for the, um, for the comments because the different comments uh, are also saved in a kind of a version history. So um, if you didn't see the video before, please make sure to check it out because that's where I explain how this code works. And um, we are going to leave it as this, so we're not going to change anything here. I'm going to click done, and this will create this uh, parameters uh, custom query here. So we'll leave this as it is because this is only used uh, to be to pass the information from each row into these fields so that we can invoke that data from SharePoint. What we do next is we go back to our um, query where we have our SharePoint list name, ID and SharePoint site name. Uh, let's bring that, that like that. Looks a bit more huh, hierarchical. Um, and we're going to say uh, add a column and then invoke a custom function. 
So the function will be called uh, get comments, comments. And the function query that we're going to use is the one that we just created here, extract comments query. And here you can also select either uh, to get the values from a plain text, like static value when you, where you type it in, or from uh, a column. So if you put it as, as plain text where you write it down, it is, um, it is not dynamic. So it will always show the same uh, value in the rows. So that's something we don't uh, need. Uh, so we are going to select column name for all of these fields. And it has already recognized that for the SharePoint site field, uh, it will use the SharePoint site name column, this one here. For the SharePoint list name, it needs then to use the SharePoint list name column and for the item ID, the item ID column. So now the errors are gone. I can click OK and this will now uh, bring a table so it, it invokes that information from, from SharePoint and it brings a table for each row. So what we can do here is that if I expand this, it says properties. Now it has only one table. Don't mistake it for a column, it's another table. So now we can see that um, because we until here we are at the same step as the video before, where we have all the version, uh, different version history uh, versions from each item. You know, so we can see here item ID one, if we filter this real quick, uh, it has 10 versions. Why? Because if I go back to my schools list and check the version item uh, or the version history from the item with ID number one, it has 10 versions here. Now you can see those. That's why we can see here 10 entries for that item ID. So let's remove the filtering so that we can have all the data back. And now we can expand this properties table. So what we can do here is we can say, uh, I don't want any column except of the comments. So if I click comments here, this will bring all the comments that are um, in those items. So we can see here that some of them are displaying this HTML text and some of them are displaying a table value. What you can do here, because I don't want these table values, I only want the text from the comments for each item. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going, uh, because I cannot filter them out, no? you can see here, it's not displaying that table value, you cannot filter that out. So what you can do is you can transform the column from general type, as it is now, to text. And this will throw errors because it cannot uh, transform table values into text. So what you can do next is you can right click and say remove errors. And then you can keep only the text. But we're almost there. We're still not there. We're almost there because this is now in HTML format. As you can see here, we have this div style and classes and the text that we're looking for is somewhere hidden in there. So how do we extract this information? What we can do is we can create a new custom column and then, yeah, first of all, we can rename this into a uh, comment uh, text. I don't know, it doesn't matter. So what we can use here is the function html.table and then we can say that we want to use the column uh, comments, comma, then we need two curly brackets and now we're going to create a table from that, um, from that uh, value in that row. So the column will be called text and the values are the root. So we type here root. Then we need to close these curly brackets so that we complete our table format. And then we close the parentheses so that we can close the function html.table. If you click now OK, this will extract the data from this, uh, from this column and then create a table. So then you can go on and say extract from that table, the text, because that's the column that we created in that uh, curly bracket and say, okay. And now we can see the plain text from this column. 
and then we can go on and delete this because we don't need it anymore. And here we go, we have our um, our two items because we have item one here four times and this one, item two, with the comments. So if we test it now, let's go into item number, uh, let's go into item number three and click on the view entries. Then I'm going to go to the comment section and click edit and say, this is a demo test. Click save and this will appear here. Then we can go into home, say refresh, preview, and we should be able to see here a new item ID number three with the comment. And there it is. We have our new item ID number three. This is a demo test. And this is how you can bring your um, your uh, rich text expandable, how do you, I don't know how to call it, uh, comments field into Power BI. And from here on, you have the item ID. You can create a one to many relationship um, between the items with its information and the uh, comments and maybe visualize that in a table in your report or however you like. That's it with this video. I hope you liked it. I hope it helps you. And if you did so, please make sure that you give a thumbs up to the video and that you subscribe to the channel. It will help me grow the channel a bit more. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you had some fun. See you on the next one. Have a nice time. Bye. Thank you.